Welcome. In this video, we are going to look at question 2 for math paper 2 for the year 2022 for the GCE. So as we can see, the first question, question A, we are told to simplify. So to simplify simply means to make it simple. Now we have two operators. We have division operator and multiplication operator. So for a question like this one, we need to make sure that we only have one operator, which is multiplication. So we are going to begin by first expanding. Then the second one will be changing the division operator into multiplication operator. Then after that is done, the fraction that comes after the division sign must be flipped. So now let's get to work. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand. So instead of writing 4p, I'll just say 4 multiplied by p over 3 multiplied by q. Then we are saying this changes into multiplication. So after that changes into multiplication, then we are going to flip the fraction. So the denominator becomes the numerator and the numerator becomes the denominator. Then if after that is done, so instead of writing 6, 6 is same as 3 multiplied by 2. So I'm going to break the 6 into two numbers divided by, instead of writing p squared, I'll say p multiplied by p times another q. Then times it, we'll have p times q over 2. Right, then upon reaching here, we can just see the numbers and the letters that we can cancel. So, uh, we can see that here we have a 3. So, I can cancel this 3. Then, what else do we have? We have this 2 and this 2 can be cancelled. What else can we cancel? So, we can cancel this Q and this Q. What else can we cancel? We can cancel this P and this P. Then this P and this P goes. Now let's check from the first fraction. What do we have? So from this <coughs> on top, excuse me, we can see that the P is gone. So we have 4 over here. We've cancelled every term. So it's same as 1. So whenever everything is cancelled, it means there is just C a 1 remaining. So on top here, since C3 and 2 have gone, we have 1 over P is gone, P is gone, so there is only Q. Then e times e, P is gone, Q is gone, we have 1 over 2 is gone, over 1. Then from there I'm going to say 4 times 1 times 1 is just 4 over 1 times Q times Q it's just CQ. So that's our final answer. Right, so we move on to question B. So question B is coming from series and sequences. Now, uh, series and sequences is subdivided into uh, two sequences. We have arithmetic sequence or progression that comes in math paper 1 and geometric progression which comes in math paper 2. So the one that we are dealing with here is a geometric progression that we can see from the equation. So we are told the first three terms of a geometric progression are 3, 6, and 12, respectively. Find, so Roman number one should be find the nth term. So now, how do we find the, the nth term? So we are going to write the formula for the nth term for a GP, so Tn is equal to uh, a times the r raised to the power n minus 1. So that's our formula where a is the first term in the sequence, the first number. Then r is the common ratio. So the common ratio is a number multiplied by one term <coughs> to get the next term. Then n is the number of terms. But for a question like finding the nth term, 
the value of n should not be substituted. So our task here will be we need to find a then we also have to look at the common ratio. So we are given term number one. So first term, term number two is given, term number three is also given. So the first term is three. The second term is six. The third term is 12. So let's put the numbers. So we have three, six, and 12. So to find R, common ratio, so you see R is equal to second term over first term. So which is it? Common ratio is equal to our second term is six, our second term is it? Meaning first term is it? three. So we'll say 6 over 3, which is giving us the ratio of 2, which means that to move from 3 to 6, they multiply by 2. Then from 6 to 12, they multiply by 2. So that's what the common ratio means. Or if want, we can also find the same common ratio by dividing uh, term number 3 and term number 2. So term number 3 is 12, term number one, uh, 2 is 6, so our common ratio is still 2. So after the common ratio is found, let's look at uh, our A. So A is the first uh, term, so in our sequence, we have 3. So what I'm going to do now is to do a substitution. So I'm going to say Tn is equal to A is our first number, 3. R is our common ratio to raised to the power n minus 1. So this is your final answer. Do not multiply 3 and 2. Why? Because this power only affects the common ratio. So that's the reason why we just leave it at this point. Right, so we move on to Roman number 2. So for this person, we just want to find geometric mean of 96 and 3. 84. So let's say we have a sequence like this one, 2, 4, 8. So we know that t to move from 2 to 4, it was multiplied by 2. 4 to 8, multiplied by 2. So our common ratio is 2. Now, let's say if we have uh, numbers like 2, then uh, we don't have the middle term, then we have 8. So the mean, whenever you hear the geometric mean, is the middle number of two consecutive terms. So I'm going to give them uh, some letters. So the first one will say A, then B, A, C. So the geometric mean, the middle term is B. Then to find this middle number, you need to find the square root of the product of A and C. So that's the easiest formula. So what are we saying? So what we are saying is, you get this number, so you say 2, multiply by this number, 8. So 2 times 8 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. We can see that we are still getting the same number. So remember, the geometric mean is just the middle term. Now, so for this number, we have 96, comma, dash, then comma, 384. So this one is A, B, C. So to find our mean, we'll say B is equal to the square root of A multiplied by C, which is, we'll say, the value of A is 96 times 384. So let's now punch on the calculator. So if I multiply 96 by 384, so I'm getting 36,864. Then you just go on your calculator, you find the square root. So the square root is 192. So this means that in between 96 and 384, we have 192 as a middle term. So that's what you need to know about the mean. 
Now, what of the sum? So, how do you find the sum of the first eight terms? So, the sum is like the answer that we get after the addition of numbers. So, to find the sum, we are going to write the formula. So, sum of n terms is equal to. So, this formula depends on the size of the common ratio. So when the common ratio is greater than 1, then the formula that you are supposed to use is A, open brackets, R raised to the power N minus 1 over R minus 1. So what is our N? So N is the number of terms. So we have 8. Then remember, common ratio, we found it, it's 2. So let's now do the substitution. So we are going to have sum of 8 terms. Is equal to A is still the first term, which is 3. Then we have 2 raised to the power 8 minus 1 over 2 minus 1. So first I'm going to simplify. What is 2 raised to the power 8? So I'm getting 256 minus 1 over 2 minus 1 is just 1. So we have 3 multiplied by 256 minus 1 is 255. Then 255 multiplied by 3, I'm getting 765 as the sum of the 8 terms. So if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Hit the notification uh, bell. Then if you want the online intuitions, please feel free to inbox so that's it for this video thanks for watching